Hello, everyone. Today, the bookworms are going to be reading. There was an old auntie who swallowed a samosa, written by Asma Hussein, illustrated by Milton Bazerk. Let's get into the book. In a little old house at the end of a grove, Auntie Sophia stood over a piping hot stove. She stirred onions and beef without ever spilling to make her out of this world samosa filling. Add a little bit of this and a bit of that too. This old samosa pro knew exactly what to do. It was now time to add a splash of her special sauce made from peppers that are hard to come across. She'd grown the peppers herself from the tiniest seeds. She'd watered them, sung to them, and removed the weeds. After months of reciting her sweet garden sonnets, she would finally pluck her perfect scotch bonnets. They shone in her basket, orange, yellow, and red. She made sauces and soups and magnificent bread. But not everyone's tummy could take this pepper's heat, so she poured just a few drops into the meat. Ding, ding, dong! Rang the ancient doorbell. It was Auntie Ainara. She could easily tell. As Auntie Sophia rushed to open the door, Serrano the cat thought, "What's this bottle for?" You're not ready, Sophia. It's almost twilight. Did you forget? It's iftar at the mosque tonight. We have plenty of time, old friend. Don't you worry. I'll stuff my samosas and fry them in a hurry. Auntie Sophia's mouth watered as the samosas sizzled and fried. She stacked them up tall with excitement and pride. The friends drove uphill to the only mosque in town and arrived as the sky turned orange and the sun went down. The mosque buzzed with murmurs of delight. They would give thanks, eat, then pray through the night. Each guest bit into a plump, juicy date, but not Auntie Sophia. She reached for the samosa plate. She plucked a perfect triangle and went to take a bite. The imam stood at the front and tapped on the mic. He leaned in to speak. Screech, bazoo, cree, katrik. Oh no! Oh dear! The imam's mic screeched out of control. Gulp and made Auntie Sophia swallow her samosa whole. She had only wanted a single scrumptious bite. She didn't mean to swallow it. Something wasn't right. Her belly groaned and gurgled. It shimmied and shook. She jumped up and yelled, "What in the world did I cook?" Fire! Fire! There's fire in my belly. She grabbed the first thing she saw, a huge bowl of jelly. Down it all went. So glad she didn't choke. The fire, it fizzled. She coughed up big puffs of smoke. But the jelly in her belly soon bubbled and jiggled. All the boys and girls pointed and giggled. This is no laughing matter, my dear little ones. Quick, pass me some of those plump garlic buns. She gulped down the buns and sighed in relief. But the happiness that followed would be very brief. The garlic buns stopped the wiggle of that jelly. But a new problem rose up. They were very, very smelly. Her garlic breath billowed out like a cloud. Desperate gasping soon heaved from the crowd. Oh no! She said, "This foul breath just won't do. I'll have some mint lemonade, and I'll be good as new." She poured it into her tummy with a great big glug. Not a single drop spilled on the striped green rug. The mint did the trick, and the smell was gone. We can finally pray, she said with a yawn. 
But it wasn't long before her stomach glugged and gargled. The children who heard it were truly quite startled. The lemonade swirled in her tummy till she was dizzy. So she reached for the nearest pot in a tizzy. She gobbled up that pot of fluffed saffron rice. Thankfully, it was cooked with almost no spice. Ah!、Uh, Auntie Sophia sighed and patted her tummy. She was tired and spent, but boy, was that yummy! Everyone sat quiet as they watched and waited. They weren't very happy with the mess she'd created. Burp. Auntie Sophia eyed Auntie Anara's chocolate cake. Dessert is just what I need to stay awake. Stop," said Auntie Anara. "You've eaten our whole iftar. That's quite enough now. You've gone too far." Auntie Sophia gazed in wonder at the empty food trays. She'd eaten enough to last a family for days. I'm ready to pray now," she said in a soft, timid tone, and waddled to the prayer space all on her own. Just as the imam was about to start praying, Auntie Sophia began hiccuping and swaying. All this food was just too much to keep. Auntie Sophia was falling asleep. She tipped right over, knocking people one by one to the ground. Then she went rolling through the mosque, around and around. She rolled over them all, past the little bookstore, past the shoe racks, and right out the front door. She rolled down the hill, all the way down, 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 and plopped in front of her house with a great big frown. She looked through her window, and you know what she saw? Serrano grinning at her, tapping the bottle with his paw. Oh, silly me! She said, "I should have known it was you." You see, previously he'd done the same to her lamb stew. Right then, Auntie Sophia decided two important things. First. She would send the mosque some pizza and wings, and next year she'd spend all her gardening hours growing nothing in that soil but beautiful, fragrant flowers. Meanwhile, back at the mosque, no. Here is a recipe for delicious spicy beef samosas you can try out. The end. That's it for today, everyone. I hope you guys enjoyed. For more read-alongs like these, don't forget to subscribe. If you enjoyed the book, give it a big thumbs up and share it with a friend. Don't forget to join us every day for a new video with a fun read-along. I'll see you guys next time. Bye.